Let's say you had a URL that looks something like this. View user info, user ID 12. Now, most of you might add a single or a double quote at the end because it's just an OCD thing at this point. But what happens if you change this value to something else? Will the web page error out? Or will it show you the sensitive information of another user? Well, let's talk about it. Insecure Direct Object Reference, or simply IDOR, means that the application directly exposes a reference to an object, something like a user detail or files or anything else, which can be directly accessed regardless of the authorization. From the earlier example, if the web application was directly using the user's input to retrieve the user's information without any explicit authorization checks, then what is stopping us from simply changing the value to another user's ID and get all the sensitive information? Nothing, right? Well, this is the basic idea of an insecure direct object reference. Let's look at a quick demo on how this works so that we can understand it practically. Assume the following. Pornbook is a social networking website. As usual, people are allowed to create accounts and start using the web application. You can also view the settings area where all the sensitive information like phone numbers, email addresses and stuff like that are available. If you look at the URL, you can see two things. First one is the path, which is forward slash settings. And there's a parameter, which is UID, and it's set to some numeric value. Now, let's try to play with this. If I increment the value by one, what would happen? Let's try it. Boom. We get the details of another user without his permissions. Now, why does this happen? Well, let's look at some code examples to understand it a bit more. As you can see in this PHP code, we're taking in a parameter directly and using it to retrieve user's information, which is of course not the correct way of doing things. To fix this, a server has to have a session cookie and then look up the user ID in the backend instead of blindly accepting whatever is sent by the user. And in case of serverless architecture, where user ID is taken from the client, then the server needs to have some sort of protections against tampering the data by including a signature. JWT or JSON Web Tokens are a good example for this. Anyways, getting back to IDORs, in some cases you might also be able to update the value of another user's account without any authorization. So let's try that now. If we try to update the user's settings, I can see the HTTP request being made in the burp proxy. If you look at the parameters, we can see all the values which needs to be updated and this makes sense. But you can also see a UID parameter which is being set to a numeric value. Now if we change this value to another user's ID, what would happen? Let's try that. And we get success message. Now of course you can't know for sure that the values that you just updated did reflect in the other user's account. This is pretty much like a blind insecure direct object reference, but you can still make it not so blind by creating another dummy account and test on that. Now that we know a bit about insecure direct object references, let's move on into something very similar to this called forced browsing. Sometimes when the user uploads a file privately, like an image or any media, the web application might expose a direct reference to the file, which might look something like this. Now, if an attacker directly visits this link, he or she can view the image, even though this is a private image. This is termed as forced browsing. This happens due to the fact that the web application doesn't map the file permissions to the user's session, which basically means anyone can simply start enumerating file names and start downloading private images with ease. Now, sometimes things might get a bit more tricky. You will be able to find an insecure direct object reference vulnerability, let's say in a delete account request, where the backend blindly accepts the user ID from the user and deletes that account. But in many cases, the problem would be that the user ID is way too long to be guessed or to be even enumerated. 
consider this as the user ID. This is a UUID, which stands for Universally Unique Identifier. And this value is pretty much random, and you can't just guess it. Now, in this kind of scenario, what would you do? Of course, try to find other ways to leak the user ID. This seems like a pretty good idea, and it was. Once I was in the exact same situation, where I had a clear IDOR vulnerability, but I could not exploit it because the UUID was way too long and it was not guessable. But after looking at the application for a while, the UUID was actually being leaked in the JavaScript response when I made a request to the user's account. This was a straightforward insecure direct object reference vulnerability, but with an extra step of finding the UUID. Now, let me try to put you through a situation and make you think about possible ways of finding insecure direct object references. Let's say you have a feature to delete a post and it uses the post ID sent from the user and directly deletes the post. But the server checks if the user has permissions to delete the post by making a request to a separate service. Now, my question is, is there a possible way to bypass this check? I know the question is very vague, but I just want you guys to think what can possibly be a potential bypass when there are different services in the picture. I'll give you about five seconds. Did you get it? If you did, awesome. If you didn't, it's totally fine. Whenever there are multiple services or programs in the picture, there could be some differences in how these services or programs parse things. This is called parser differential. Now, how can you make different services see things differently if you're just sending one numeric value? What if we send multiple numeric values? Sound familiar? We're trying to pollute the parameters by adding the same parameter with a different value. And this is called HTTP parameter pollutioning. And I've already covered this in another video. HTTP parameter pollution can be used with insecure direct object references. And it's exactly what Mert Tarshi did to unsubscribe notifications on Twitter. Insecure direct object references could be somewhat easy to find, but sometimes to find them, you might want to think outside the box. Either way, you know exactly what to do when you come across a parameter next time, apart from adding a quote.